In this tutorial series, you're going to learn how to use Godot High Level Multiplayer API and WebSockets to create a dedicated server and make a top down shooter game and host the server on a VPS as you can see here. All the code will be available on GitHub and the link and timestamps will be in the description below. So before we get into coding, I want you to know and understand what client and server is. So the client is basically the game and the server is basically what is helping you to connect to other players. So now the server has an IP address and the app, the code you're using is going to run in on a port. So now this port is like, um, for example, um, IP address is the house or let's say a building and the port is like the apartment where a party is happening so the client wants to go to the building first then go to the port so this port can be basically a random number or something um some ports are being used anyways but for preferences i like using 42 42 because i don't know it's just a really cool number <laughs> but you can use things like 13 900 or um 69 700 i'm not sure about that one don't quote me on that but basically almost any random number will work if it doesn't work just try changing the post try changing the last digits or something so when the client successfully connects to the server with its ip address it's going to be able to send rpc calls so that means remote procedural calls so now this um, helps talk to the server and talk to other nodes so now some methods we're going to be using in godot which are rpc id underscore id and this is to basically send particular information to a particular client. So um, the ID of one is always the server. So when each client is being connected to a server, let's say there's another client here. Sorry, pardon my drawing. This is another client. When it connects to the server, it's giving an ID. So this ID is basically almost random. And also this guy too is giving an ID. But in Godot, the server always has an ID of one. I don't know if this is everywhere um with servers but in godot the server always has an idea of one so if you want to send a remote procedure call from a client to the server we use id of one or if you want to broadcast it use the id of zero so there are many other rpc calls that are there rpc are reliable and all that and i'll explain them as i'm coding throughout the tutorial but i just want you to understand the basic concept of connecting the client to the server and how their ids are given the clients, uh, the clients' IDs are always random, random numbers, and it changes every time you connect. But the server ID is always one. So first of all, um, before you can get started, you need to have two Godot um, open, I guess. So the first one is going to be the client, as you can see at the top left, and the second one is going to be a server. So the server is where, as I said, um, all the clients will be connecting to so that we can interact with each other. So here in the clients, we have our lobby scene and we have color X and a join button. So now before we go further, I want you to make this um, script here called server. And you can just do it by right clicking, click new script and name it server.gd. So now this is the script that is going to be interacting toe to toe with our server. And we have to go to projects, project settings, auto load, and we'll get to put it as an auto loader script. That's, it. That's it there. So we're going to name server. Please make sure this thing is a capital S because if it's not, you might run into some problems. Or you can make it a small S and I'll tell you where else we need to make the other server the same name with this one, basically. So we add that and we go to our other server, um, Godot screen here open. And we're going to make other node, node. And now this node is going to be named server. So remember when I said use a capital S, this is why. If you use the small S there, just change this to a small S and you'll be all good. So we're going to save this server.tscn, add a script, server.gd. And over here on the ready function is where we're going to be creating the server. So there are two ways to make a server, whether using a WebSocket server or using the default multiplayer API made by Google. So first off, I'm going to start with the multiplayer API, then go to the WebSocket. So first off, we're going to change this ready function to with multiplayer API. We're going to initialize the server by doing network multiplayer in net dot new. Now we're going to create a server with the port 4242. Remember when I said I like that port. And we're going to start using a variable error so that in case there's any error, we can spot it and try to fix it. Then over here, if error is not equals to OK, that means if the server could not be created for some reason, probably the port is already in use or something. 
then we want to print unable to start server then we return but if the server is okay we set the current trees network peer to be equal to server then we do get tree dot connect network peer connected to underscore player connected so this is just going to basically check whenever a new peer is connected and connect the function to this also we connect the disconnected signal so that we'll get alerted if the pair disconnects and if all is good we're going to print server created then on the player connected signal it's going to take in a variable id and remember when i told you that that id is going to be completely random so we're going to take in the variable id and just print player connected then on disconnected we're going to print again player id disconnected or whatever you want to print it so this is probably everything to create a server i hope i'm not wrong with that as using the multiplayer API and we want to start this on the ready so we say funk let's go ready with multiplayer API and this should work so we're just going to run this select current as the default scene and it runs and here in the console you can see server created so we're done with the server right now we go back to the client project we go to script inside the server.gd script we want to do some things on the join server function we're going to create a client with the network multiplayer internet object now we're going to create a client using this IP address and this IP address is the IP address of your current computer so you don't have to set up the server first um, on a VPS or look you can do it on your local machine with this IP address and as I said we have to connect to the same port which is 4242 and if the error is not okay then we have to print unable to connect and return but if it's okay we set the network peer into the client so before we can run this script we have to call the join server and we're going to call it from the lobby where we press the join button we want server dot join server so remember the last time in the server we had to connect some signals here we're going to connect it on the ready so we do funk underscore ready i are going to connect the connected to server server disconnected and connection field just so that we can debug properly and if it's not connecting we know why and we basically do the same similar thing on connected to server we print connected to server on server disconnected same thing so we all this done with the client and the server we're finally ready for testing but before that godot um has a debugger problem where um if you're running two files it's going to show something like um debug debugger is connected on your remote something of that sort so we go over to editor editor settings and we're going to change one of them so this guy is on the 16 now and the server is going to be on a 6007 it's not a must that it has to be the same remote ports but you can just play around with these values and see the one that works for you so anyways we run it again we run the server and we go over to the client and run the client and now if we did everything well make sure you connect your join pressed and we click join game when you see what connected to the server successfully so this is how to do um we go around with the network multiplayer in net part so i'm going to go over to the websocket clients part now in the server side the websocket part you're going to just create a function with websocket you must not create this function you can just put it inside the ready if you're if you want to use websocket server for the entire game or something then you're going to create a server with um, the websocket server object then the same thing error is going to be equal to server.listen but the difference is here you listen and here you just create a server so you're going to listen on port 4242 and this is just basically a an empty post string array and at the end here is true so this you don't actually have to worry about this but it's true the reason why we're doing this is because um, you must not put it anyways but it helps us change the WebSocket server to a Godot Multiplayer API. The Godot Multiplayer API helps us communicate a lot easier and a lot development friendly, if you ask me. So basically, it's going to be the same thing with your Multiplayer API one. So that's why we put it through there. So if error is not okay, then we start the server, then set process to false and return. The reason why we're setting process to false, false I'll tell you in a minute, um, but just set process to false. Then we're going to set the trees network pair if the error is okay we set the network pair to server and we connect the signals pair connected and pair disconnected and over here i want to tell you why this set process is here so on a websocket server on the process function you have to always pull or pull i don't know how to pronounce that <laughs> so here we're going to have to do funk underscore process and we say client dot sorry server but as you can see server is not um, identified 
So we're going to get rid of this and we're going to put var server here. So now server is now a global variable and can be accessed through the two functions. And on the ready, we're just going to change this to with WebSocket. Hopefully we are done and hopefully that's all you need to do to change this from a multiplayer API to a WebSocket, but basically still the same thing. So on the client project, first of all, we're going to declare a variable client up here. And up here, we're going to, in the ready function, we're going to set underscore process to false so that the process function won't get run until we tell it to do so. Here in the join server, so here we create a new WebSocket client object. Remember the other one was WebSocket server, but this one is going to be WebSocket client. The next thing is we're going to set error to be equal to client.connect to URL. So we're going to connect to the IP address and the port. As you can see, port is 4242. So you're going to do the IP address colon and the port. Then as I said, post string array, you don't really need this. Um, you don't need to change anything. You just put it as empty and true is to make the WebSocket clients to behave like a multiplayer API. If error is not equal to OK, then we're going to click print and unable to connect and we're going to return. Else, we're going to set the network peer to client and we're going to set the process function to true. Now, the process function, again, we'll have to still pop. So, on the process function, we're going to do client pop. Don't look at this as inefficient code because it's on the process function. This is actually what the level multiplier does just that you're not seeing it and you're not typing it in. anyways it's going to work let's just try by clicking play on the client and play on the server so we're going to go back to the client join game and you can see player connected um as i said a random long number and on the client you're going to see connected to server so this is how to connect with web sockets and multiplayer api we go do for the rest of this tutorial, I'm going to just be strictly using uh, multiplayer API, but it's also the same thing if you want to still follow along. Just do everything I do, but remember to change this part of your code and that part of the server too. So yeah, I think that's it. Thanks for watching. See you guys next time. Smash subscribe and.